What's good, everybody? Let's continue the series. More blasphemy from your guy, Charleston White. Let's look at it. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He's not content. He's talking about what he needs to do more of. He's telling, then he starts blaspheming God, talking about when he woke up the disciple. He can't even tell you how the story goes. Like, you don't even know. He's just talking about things God did and comparing himself. No, no, sir. First Timothy chapter six, verse 10. For the love of money, he's in love with money. He, he's doing it in the video. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred in faith, after the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So while he's chasing money, talking about money and different things in his situation, destruction could be at any moment. Remember, he doesn't have friends. He has, well, he has not a lot of friends, more enemies than friends. Okay. Matthew chapter six, verse 24. No man can serve two masters. That's what he's doing right here. He's serving two masters. That's his character. So if it makes his character is serving two masters, he's showing you how to serve two masters. He wants to talk about God and in the same breath, turn around and talk about how he talked to his people like disciples. Like it's blasphemy. You don't, you can't do that. Okay. Man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. I'm going to say I believe that he despises God because he's holding on to the wickedness that he's continually doing. He's continually doing wickedness like effortlessly. Like he's not even thinking about it. It's like not even a thought in his mind. It's like, what are you doing, man? OK, let's get it. First Timothy chapter six starting at the 17th verse charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in the uncertain riches but in the living god who giveth us richly all things to enjoy he's not doing any of that he's not doing any of that 18 that they do good that they be rich in good works ready to distribute willing to communicate Remember, good works don't get you into heaven, but good works is what God wants to see you do as your character. Okay, 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold to on eternal life. He's laying hold to money. He's talking about what people got to do. Like you got to hustle up this money. I got to do this show. I'm about to go in here and rock this show. That's all he's worried about. None of the stuff he said, none of the enemies and what they said to him. That's what I'm saying. He's unawares. Danger's around and he's unawares. As we've read in a different story, he's unaware. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So all that wealth he's talking about getting, it's going to go to someone else when he gets off because of all he said. He's not sorry. First Timothy chapter five, verse eight. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own household, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. OK, who knows who he's provided for? He's just talking about him getting money. You don't see anything else he's doing. Philippians chapter four, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He's not worried about God providing for him. He don't he could care less. He don't care. That's what I'm trying to tell you. all He don't care. And that's wicked. It's dangerous. It's you don't know what's going to happen. Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is me that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. He's not counting on God. So if you're not counting on God, who's providing that riches, the opportunity, your wealth? Who is it? If it's not God, he doesn't see it. Like this, is, you're a crit, you're, you got to get yourself together, Charleston White. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrow is servant to the lender. All this money you're getting, you're on borrow, you want to know. <laughs> I got to say this, because we're getting there. For his other one, I got to say it now, though. He's already on borrow time. We all are. But you're trying to, like, you're literally here playing with your life. Strumming up strife. Proverbs chapter 22, verse one, good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold right there. That's the crux upon all crux. Your name is bad out here. It's good in your mind, but it's bad. You got a lot of people after you just over your name. 
and you're not even thinking. Dang, man. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 18. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Your riches are durable. They could go at any moment. You get sued, something can happen, you lose money. Like, you're not even counting on God. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. He that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye. In consideration, not that poverty shall come upon him. What did I just say? You'll lose it out of nowhere. And you're like, dang. Then you're like, who want to book a show with old Charlie? You there praising yourself, yo. Luke chapter 16, verse 11. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Right there, yo. You will, you're not even loyal to yourself in all this stuff you're saying. Who's going to count on you? Who's going to believe in you? you saying, watch me. I got you. I'm going to lead you. No one's really going to want to be led by you. And he's at, in Atlanta. Remember, he's in Atlanta. Boasting, doing that stuff. All right. Matthew chapter 6, starting at the 19th verse. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust, rust doeth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. There neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What did I tell y'all about Charleston White? He does the devil's duty. Right there confirmed. Right there. Look at what he's doing. All he's saying. He's literally doing the devil's duty. His heart's here on this earth with wealth. He's only worried about what's around him here. He's not worried about what comes after life. He's not. And that's dangerous. It's like he hasn't been taught what he needs to be taught. But we know that can't be true because he would have been going with that mentality. At some point, he wasn't saying all this, doing all this. He started doing and saying it. Why? And for what? Because he realized it brought him fame and it gave him an opportunity to get attention. He does it for the thrill and that's evil. And we're always getting there with the next one. I'm almost talking about the next one. Acts chapter two, verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common. 45. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men. Has every man had no need? Yo, he would never give up his possessions. That's all he has. He would never give or help or do good. He's all right. In this video, you're going to hear, hear him say, hand in everybody $20 that I see, sir. If that's the only good work you have to offer, that's not good enough because you're taunting and berating youth. Still young boys, you're still talking trash on young boys. So what are you gaining at the end? Nothing like, yo, he's not seeing his own character. And the wickedness he has in his own heart. Because he's doing all these things to get a thrill. But it's really sending these boys down a bad path, man. It's sending them to a bad place. Ugh. Acts chapter 4, verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed has his own. But they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. And laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. See, God took a little of what everybody had and made it provide for everyone. That's what you want. You want that preservation. If you don't have preservation, you can get rich. What's going to keep you there? If you don't have Christ, who's going to keep you there? Nobody, because he allows wealth. I just read that just now. He allows wealth. Nothing else. There's no other way. If you're not, you're serving another master, which it comes at a cost more than anyone can pay, more than anyone can afford. And that's a fact. It's crazy. You're not realizing the type of danger you're in of a character, you're almost like a teenager running wild, not learning. Like, you got to learn, son. You got to get yourself together. Comes a point in time when God, oh, man. First Timothy. Let's see. No, no, no. Over here. I want to take him over here. Because this is, this is who you truly are over here. 
Oh, here we go. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 starting. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, and that's all of us. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. If you seek God, he provides. You're not worried about God providing. You're speaking as if you are a God. Saying, just like he, he said to the disciples, you're joking on them in the video. Yo, how is this word mocked? What's mocked about this word? In the video, you're doing this exact thing. Like, yo, I can't make this up. Right on time. Charleston White is doing everything this Bible tells him not to. Willingly, with joy, happily. Doing a jogging move, dancing and stuff. Don't you know God allows you motion, son? Don't you get that? At any given time, he could take motion from you. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you don't know bad until bad's bad right before you. And that's sad. That's sad, yo, because you're too old for that. Like, look at your age, Charleston White. Like, there's no reason you should be thinking and acting like this. You're joking on them young boys, but you're acting like a young boy. How are you joking on the same thing you're acting as? Like, there's technically no difference between you and these youth, okay? Let me touch on something he said in this video, okay? He's in this video talking about, I'm going to lead the way. I know what to do. So, already with that, you're usurping yourself to a God figure, telling all the people follow you. You know what to do. No, you don't. You're going to take them to hell, for real. You don't know what to do at all. You never did. Or you wouldn't be in a predicament. You literally came into it getting attention. By ragging on young men, talking about they hold up a gun. Then you're like, yeah, show me that gun. What you going to do with that? You ain't you ain't going to do nothing. Saying, oh, you inside the house. You ain't in the streets. Somewhere they could use the gun and get killed. You're like enticing it. You're not. E Yo, are you even African-American? Are you are you wearing some type of mask? Like, what are you? Because nobody who is normal. Let me not. Go, I don't know if you're elderly, but a mature black man would not think that way. Especially going through the things you said you went through. Or you're a liar. Come on now. Any African American man that's made it to your age. Or made it to any level that you're sitting at right now bragging about. Has thought and moved different. Your love of money is making you say and do things that are very wicked. And you're not even paying attention. I just talked about your wickedness. You gotta change yo. You're in danger. You don't see it. But you're out here by yourself. No security. No protection. Just out there doing a jogging move. What if one of your enemies run down on you? It's over immediately. You can't even react. You're there doing a jogging thing, smoking, out in the middle of the city. What are you doing? Still running your mouth, dog. You got to be careful. You don't even see what's going on with your enemies. Dog. This guy's wickedly in danger. He does not see it. And he won't. Because God... Leads you to a reprobate mind. We read that. So he's in such a reprobate mind. He doesn't see it. He doesn't see it. And my other video that I had about him, what he says, it basically covers the rest. Funny thing. Let's read this. Matthew chapter 5 verse 22. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. You're literally, yo, that's you. Oh my goodness. Mark chapter 3 verse 29. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. I can't say you haven't. Because you said a lot about God. Directly. You did. So I can't even say that's not you. I can pray for you, but that's crazy. Acts chapter 19, verse 40. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar. There being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. Yo, you got to give an account for everything you're doing. Everything you're saying. What answer are you going to give to God? Yeah, I just, I was going to get right back. Like Jay-Z said in the song, dog. You got to take account for all things you say and do. Everything you ever set out your mouth. This is wicked, yo. You're, yo, you gotta, last one. Matthew chapter five, verse 21. 
Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Yes, the judgment. You're always talking about, yo, Charleston White. Right on time. 